rivers and streams that support so many people's drinking water needs to be protected. We have to start thinking of water as the precious resource that it is. If you want to protect the environment today, you know, talk to us adults. But if you want to protect it for the future, you've got to get kids on board. You've got to get them involved. This is the National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation. We teach them what we need to do today. I know that when they grow up, they'll be able to know what they need to do. We have a water crisis in America, and the only way that we're going to beat it is with everybody on board doing their part to conserve water every day. But for Earth Month, you can go to MyWaterPledge.com. I wanted to share a bit about the, the program with you and uh, what's going on with uh, the National Mayor's Challenge and why we're here today. So the National Mayor's Challenge uh, for Water Conservation, this is the 10th year that this has been going on. And Wyland started this program 10 years ago with an idea of trying to get people across the country to have a friendly competition and compete with each other to make this possible. Uh, so what they've done is they've put together a program. It's an annual month-long campaign to promote water quality and water conservation. And up, up to now, we have mayors from 37 states who are vying to see which city can be the most water-wise. The cities with the highest percentages of residents making pledges during the campaign include in the past year, Laguna Beach, Florida, Lakeland, Florida, Northport, Florida, Sacramento, California, Dallas, Texas. And overall, there's over 275 pledges made last year, 275,000 pledges made last year to change small behavior, to do little things to make a big difference when they add up, from fixing home leaks to reducing harmful runoff in rivers and streams and local waterways. So the program's run for 10 years. It's relatively simple to do. And let me show you how that's done as, as a quick screen share here on what we do and, and how we make it happen. So you should see on your screen uh, the National Mayor's, uh, National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation landing page. So if you go here, you can see all about information. Up in the upper right-hand corner, there's a Take the Pledge button. We'll touch on that in a moment. You can see the water that's been saved over the years right here in the center, the gallons of water that have been saved by the pledges that each of you as individuals have made, and a bunch of other information in here. Our, our sponsors, again, Toyota, our title sponsor, Toro, Hobie, and others who are sponsoring this throughout the years and local media partners that we have. Again, you can see a bit more about the water pledge here on this site. And also you'll notice down here, there's an opportunity for students to work on this with classrooms, and we'll touch on that in a moment, showing you how to do that. Some more information about the, uh, the um, Volunteer Water Project, which is a way for cities and uh, individuals to make contributions that give their cities credit for contributing to the, the Water Conservation and the National Mayor's Challenge. So we'll also talk on that. So three things we're gonna follow up on on how to make an individual pledge, how to do classroom pledges, and then how to do something outside of this month-long um, competition to understand what it is that uh, you can do to contribute to your city and the value it brings to you. And again, as we've talked about along the way, Toyota, one of our title sponsors, uh, is giving away uh, this year a 21 Toyota Highlander Hybrid. As you make a donation during this month, during the National Mayor's Challenge, when you take the pledge, you're able to nominate a charity of your choice to be the recipient of this vehicle. And after we go through this process, we um, evaluate the various charities, the needs, and one of them is ultimately awarded a Toyota for their work, which is fantastic in helping them deliver what they're trying to do. So again, not only is there the grand prize for uh, the, uh, the organization, the charity, but there's hundreds of other prizes that are given away during the, the competition. So when you make a pledge, you as an individual, can get uh, the potential for any number of these from Toro products to gift cards from Hobie uh, to home improvement store and hand soap bottles from other companies. So a lot of small things you can get. We have about 30 daily prizes that we try and give out. And so as you make a pledge, you have an opportunity to get something 
in addition to saving water, reducing emissions, and helping to save the species around the world and protect biodiversity by reducing uh, trash and, and other contaminants in waterways. So coming back up to the top of this webpage, uh, mywaterpledge.com is the webpage you want to go to. You can go to this webpage. It's a simple mywaterpledge.com, all one word. And when you get here, you'll see up in this upper right-hand corner is how to take the pledge. So as you can see, you click right there on the how to take the pledge, and it'll take you right away to a city. So if I want to uh, put in a city, let's say Sarasota, Florida. There we go. We start typing it in. It'll pop it up. And I can begin the pledge. And so um, you get a, a little overview here of where it is. It tells you the region that you're in. And at any point, you can click begin the pledge. Or if you type the wrong city, uh, you're visiting somewhere else, and uh, you meant to type your home city, you can change your city here and, and go right back in. So to, to enter this, you simply click on beginning the pledge. And here are some things you can do at home. Each of these pledges are simple, small items you can do at home that really don't feel like a change. They're just a small incremental change. But when you add them up, all of us doing these, or all of us pledging to try and do these, the amount of water, the amount of pollution you reduce, uh, the amount of ecosystems you protect, and the money savings that you get as an individual all add up. And that's that number you see in the beginning when we clicked in there that rolls through showing all that information. So again, you simply come in here, you look at the options, Let's say I'm going to, um, I've got a leaky faucet in the kitchen that I've always uh, been annoyed by. And, you know, I am bad. I play soccer. And so I tend to not always wash full loads of clothes, but, you know, I should be better about washing full loads of clothes and, and, um, and dishes. So I'm going to commit to those two in this next year. Or I can just click them all if I really think I can do all these things. Simply hit next. It adds up that pledge and it takes you to that, that next screen. With any live demonstration, it always has a pause in it that uh, makes you nervous as it's trying to think through this. Or maybe it's that all of you are out there doing the same thing and making your pledges right now that's slowing the system down. While it's waiting, you simply step through each of these pledges and say, look, uh, you know, I, I'm going to use reusable shopping bags. I know that a number of stores haven't allowed this in this, this past year. It's been a crazy year. Um, but as they begin to allow reusable shopping bags or, you know, as you can bring them in and then repackage your stuff outside, I want to do that this year. Again, so I'm going to commit to that. And then here's some choices in my yard. So I, I can uh, put climate appropriate plants. I can turn off sprinklers when it rains, use them on a minimal setting, do a number of things. And so I'm going to set my sprinklers to go on early when it doesn't evaporate too quickly. And here's some choices we can make on just pollutants that end up in um, the, the environment and impact local ecosystems. So oftentimes, you know, people won't pick up after their pet or uh, they don't know how to dispose of pharmaceuticals properly. So you have some choices here on what you can do. And so I've got a dog and uh, I, I'm very good about picking up my pet's waste. On occasion, I'll uh, also go through with extra bags and pick up other people's pet waste that they've left behind. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit to that. Say yes here. If I have an idea of um, the charity I'd like, I enter my email in here. And this is, you can opt in and out if having information sent to you. And you can then choose a charity of your choice to, uh, to pick a, um, that they could be nominated for this vehicle and off you go. So I'm not going to complete this because I, um, I don't want to create a, an artificial pledge in here, but that's simply how you do that national mayor's challenge. So that's uh, one of the ways to go. So let me go back up to the original uh, site here, and I'll show you some of the other options that we have um, to, to do here. So coming back up here to this homepage, I said there's a couple of other things you can do. You can work teachers and kids. We have a teacher version and a, a, a classroom version where you can, if you click here, you can visit the student edition. This is, again, geared towards schools and teachers. In addition, the Wyland Foundation has a lot of information about how um, to do class curricula, facts and, and uh, information for teachers. So teachers can certainly reach out to us and, uh, and to the webpage and get information. But you can also take the pledge here as a schoolroom. So it's a class, you can take the pledge as a class activity. You can uh, see a number of things that, that, that happen here. And so again, uh, let me just put in a city here and show you how 
this works. Let's pick Laguna Beach, California this time. Uh, and you can begin the pledge. And so again, it's just another way in, but it allows your class to, to take these activities and, and you end up with a, a very similar screen that we started with. So I uh, just wanted to show you that and how that's done. And then finally, you know, during the month, we work very hard on trying to create a, uh, a focused effort where the mayors are challenging each other to, uh, to um, do a water pledge. Here we go. Uh, the mayors are challenging each other in order to get um, a friendly competition to see if they can inspire their residents, inspire their cities to, to try harder and to, to continue to work at this. And so we really are focused in this the next 30 days on trying to get as many people to take the pledge. But oftentimes things don't work out and uh, and your the timing or the weather doesn't allow you to take it during the um, the campaign. And so there's another option in here. If we go back into this, um, go back up. Oh. So we can we can take the option of um, here this away here. There we go. So we can take the there's um, action categories you can take. You can do a, a volunteer water project, which can occur anytime throughout the year. Uh, you can do these water projects. And you can make a difference for both your community and for the wildlife by protecting ecosystems, reducing water, reducing runoff. As many of you know, a lot of the runoff that comes from the U.S. Uh, ends up in the oceans. And those oceans, that could be solids such as uh, plastic. It can also be um, things you don't necessarily see as well around chemicals and other things that can create hypoxic zones. These are dead zones around an area that, uh, that can, uh, don't allow species to grow or, or thrive in those areas. And so by reducing the amount of runoff, we can protect those ecosystems, but we can also do a number of things at home that allow us to uh, not only you know, reduce our water, but potentially capture and, and reduce runoff. And then also happen to beautify our neighborhoods, make our houses more valuable, and are generally more pleasant for everyone to come through the neighborhood. So you can take these actions anytime throughout the year. Again, there's three choices here. Water-wise home, things you can do around the house. Water-wise beautification, where you can go out and, and look at beautification projects and water-wise community. And so you can see, you can join the other participants on there. So if I look at water-wise home, it has 110 participants already active in it. And you can do a particular project. So these are the various actions that you, you can come up with. You don't have to come up with your own, but if you come up with your own, that's fantastic. We love that too. But you can go in here and do uh, various things from eating a little less meat because of the animal protein and swapping out with a vegetable protein, or again, fixing leaky faucets, installing low head, low flow shower heads, or uh, other things. Try not to run the water while you're brushing your teeth. Again, small, simple things you can do that don't take much. They're either one-time action or a daily action, and off you go. So for example, if I want to uh, learn more about insulating water pipes. It's got a click here for a little more information on why we can do this. And I can go ahead and select that, log in, and off we go. And my contribution gets added up into the total. Also goes to my city to help my city get credit during the mayor's challenge. Um, and so if it doesn't happen, if you do this in May or June of this year, that's okay. It still helps the environment and it still gives your city credit for next year's mayor challenge. So these all benefit everyone. Again, I can do a water-wise beautification project. Again, just showing you the choices online here, planting trees, looking at native plants where possible, permeable pavers, hydrozone, your landscaping, mulching the base of your trees to try and keep uh, weed growth down and also uh, retain water and moisture on the roots, and sharing your project on social media, something we all like to do. So a number of things you can do here. And again, they benefit the environment, they benefit your community, and they benefit the city. So a lot of things going on and a lot of great things you can do. Again, these are beautifications. And here we go. We're looking at um, volunteer uh, water projects. So again, trying to find things we can do within our cities, simply saying no to a plastic straw. A number of restaurants and locations have gone to asking for it. But if you know you don't need it, or if you're headed home after you pick up food and you aren't going to use the plastic utensils, plastic straws, always say no. It's a simple thing you can do. You can work on stormwater stenciling, working, organizing with the city, 
to volunteer um, with the community and, and do some stormwater uh, stenciling to remind people that so many of these go straight to the waterways and the waterways they carry with them everything that, that comes down during the flood. So uh, litter removal, again, we, we often focus on uh, some of the things we can't see in there, but litter removal is one of the most visible things, forms of plastic and do a lot of harm to ecosystems. We've all seen the, the pictures of the Great Pacific garbage gyre, which is mainly plastic pollution that's been caught in one of the, the Pacific um, rotational currents. Uh, and we've also seen pictures of, of animals, uh, turtles with straws in their nose, et cetera. So litter removal is something we can do. And it doesn't matter if you're living in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, or if you're living right along the, the ocean, trash or pollution that ends up in that waterway eventually makes its way down to an ocean or to a large body of water. It could be the Great Lakes that you're, you're trying to protect. And, and they're just as important as our oceans, just as important as the streams and rivers around us. So again, all of these things are really important to look at and do. So that's a quick run through through all of this. You know, uh, a little bit about um, Wyland, who uh, many of you may not know the artist. It's a funny thing that Wyland grew up in Michigan. He was a Detroit boy early on. And so it's when he uh, went out at the, uh, in his early teens to go visit the coast it was the first time he'd seen the ocean. And he fell in love with the ocean at that time and has been painting spectacular pictures of the ocean ever since. And so Wyland has a number of um, studios in uh, Laguna Beach, California, down in Florida, uh, and in Hawaii. And if you've ever seen his work, it is absolutely amazing. Uh, he also does a lot of um, collaboration works. Well, here he'll, you'll see uh, Wyland's work with other artists who have different styles. And so you see uh, quite a number of things. I encourage you to go out just to look at uh, and enjoy some of the art that's uh, on the, the web that the Wyland works with. So this is the 10th year of the National Mayor's Challenge um, for Water Conservation, as I've said. It's a fantastic program and it continues to grow every year, even during a, a 2020, which was a difficult year with the pandemic and all the other uh, events going on in the world, the, the Mayor's Challenge continued to thrive and grow. And we're really thankful that, um, that you're here with us today. One of the things that Wyland has done in addition to a work on the National Mayor's Challenge. He's also a partner with, um, with the UN Environmental Group uh, working on a global water challenge. So they've got, the UN has a, a global prac, uh, program for action for the protection of marine environment from land-based activity. And Wyland has been a partner with them for a number of years. And so that initiative is something that's ongoing and, and we hope to continue to grow. Uh, so I, I encourage you to go out and look at that, that um, sustainable development goal, that, that platform that the UN has. Uh, and again, you know, I think the National Mayor's Challenge is, is something that really helps us, that if we can protect marine environments from land-based uh, material, we, um, we can all make a difference with small actions. So I really encourage you to, to, um, to both look at the, the Wyland program to take the, the National Mayor's Challenge pledge and to look at some of the other programs that are out there, because again, a small change, something that we barely even notice every day is a, something that allows us to, uh, to make a big difference overall when we're done and when we um, are able to add them all up. So I think it's something that uh, I really encourage everyone to do. And, um, and I would say that uh, we should all try and make this happen every day. So with that, I'm gonna try and um, zip back to, um, to our uh, video here. So give me a moment as I try and switch with Kenny, my co-host, and see if we can make that happen um, here shortly. You can't protect one piece of water without protecting all of it, the entire water planet, because everything's connected. Every drop of water is recycled through the water cycle. The water that we drink is the same water that the dinosaurs drank. If we don't get one drop more or less, so we're beginning to poison the very thing that is the essence of all life. I thought there was a lot of oceans. There's one ocean. And if you want to, protect our ocean. You have to think about protecting our freshwater habitats, all of them, the lakes, the rivers, the streams, the ponds, the wetlands, all of it. It's all connected.
I believe water is the most important issue of our of our day of this century. You think the government is the answer for all these things? It's not. It's you and me. It's us. If everyone just became a little bit more water wise, I was would say, uh, it would make a huge difference for all of us. And what does that mean? That means instead of wasting water, we need to protect it today. And every drop counts. And by protecting water, you know, we're protecting the environment and uh, we're protecting all life and we're saving you know energy and we're saving money so it makes sense to protect uh, our water what dr sylvia earl says was the idea that what we do what we do in the next 10 years will impact the next 10,000 years wow i looked at that that could be really negative too but i saw it as a positive you know, we have a chance to create a sea change together. You know, all the people on the planet, all 7 billion of us. We have enough water if we take care of it. So that's why it's really critical that I use my art to engage the public because art has that one element that can really move people, not only uh, for awareness, but to cause action. And people today, I'm very encouraged, especially the young people, are beginning to hear that message and take action. And uh, if you want to protect the environment today, continue to talk to us adults. If you want to protect it for the future, you've got to have the kids on board. Watching Jacques Cousteau, you know, my hero in the Cousteau Society, I wanted to start my own foundation, the Wyland Foundation. It was important for me to develop programs that were art-based but also had science. One of the cool things we did early on is we created a mobile learning experience. So this truck travels all around the U.S. inviting kids to come and experience the idea that they're part of the ecosystem, part of the watershed, and the things they, they do are either gonna ensure a healthy planet or diminish it. So those are the seeds of education and inspiration that we plant deep in the minds, hearts, and souls of, of our youth. And now I'm beginning to see those investments bear fruit. Kids are becoming marine biologists. They're part of different conservation groups. They're starting their own groups. They're not going to stand by and watch us destroy our planet. They're going to be ambassadors for the planet. And uh, eventually they're going to inherit all these challenges, but they're up for it. These kids are smart. And some of them are better artists than me, so I may be out of a job after this. I hope they remember that I tried to support them, you know, when they were coming up. <laughs> Please remember me. <laughs> that was uh, Wyland, the artist, who has been an inspiration for generations and we hope will be an inspiration for generations to come. So we're at the end of our event here in Sarasota, Florida. You can see they're wrapping up there and, uh, and the mural. Uh, Wyland, as I said, will finish that mural off, but it's a little drier there. But we really want to thank all of you for attending today. We want to thank our sponsors, uh, Toyota, Toro, Hobie, and the others who have all contributed to this. And most importantly, we want you to take that simple action, to take the pledge today, to go to mywaterpledge.com, Take the pledge today. And again, if you can't do it now and you need to do it later, we've got a community program you can do year round. We also have uh, the classroom programs so, and, and materials for teachers. Uh, as you just saw in the video, there's a, a mobile learning center, a Wyland, a thousand square foot mobile learning center that can go from school to school. And we encourage you to reach out to the foundation and see if it's going to be in your area, if you can schedule it to be in your area. A number of ways to do it. But most importantly is to take that pledge to do our part to reduce water consumption, to try and protect ecosystems around us, to try and protect species around us, and to do our part to make this place a better world. Thank you all for joining us today and thank Wyland for his painting that he's done in Sarasota, Florida. We hope that uh, you're able to join the, the Wyland Foundation moving forward and continue to work with us. And we look forward to a great challenge this year and 
your contribution to that. So thank you and, and uh, good luck. We'll see you again soon. Thank you, everyone.